Right, Ms. Fagerman, if you could tell us about uh, the panel you just addressed. Yes, so we've just organized a panel with uh, European experiences on smart cities uh, and trying to really show how the European Union can be a very good partner for India on smart cities. You know, we have 28 member states in Europe uh, and we have a very similar structure to the Indian structure actually with the states and the national level. Uh, so we do the frameworks uh, at the European level, but then it's up to each member state to implement them. So we've had a quite a few uh, six, seven member states to showcase their best smart cities experiences, trying to show how that can be consolidated into something that could be useful for India. All right. You said uh, a similar situation, however, here uh, the entire demographic situation and the entire economical situation is different. So, uh, what would be the learning curve from Europe? So there is, of course, a lot of differences, that's, that's clear, but the structure itself, the whole governance uh, is very similar. Uh, so that's the first starting point. Second is that we have also a lot of diversity inside uh, Europe, and we saw that also in the session. We have some countries that are very well developed, rich, uh, and some countries that uh, are like the new member states. We heard uh, from the colleagues from Poland, for example, that they have to look for very small, cost-effective solutions that are really uh, applicable to, to their economy. So, uh, so in that sense, uh, we have a variety uh, of solutions, and, and we think that uh, India is such a vast uh, country and there's so many uh, opportunities and challenges here that uh, if we can collate all these European examples, uh, that can really be beneficial. Right. If you could uh, tell us a little more about uh, your collaboration with Mumbai and Navi Mumbai. Yeah. Yes, so actually we've had a Mumbai, uh, EU Mumbai uh, urbanization uh, cooperation already since 2013. So that was before something was called Smart Cities, uh, but actually it's, uh, it's very much the same. Uh, so. We saw a lot of opportunities on working with Mumbai uh, and uh, we've been kind of scoping out the cooperation since then. So we've uh, organized uh, conferences, workshops on different uh, smart city topics. So we've been looking at the environmental part, so on waste, uh, energy, uh, transport, uh, wastewater, all these things that are actually very important components of smart city. So smart city, what we learned in the session we just had is from a European perspective, it's about environment, it's about economy, and it's very much about social inclusion, it's about people. Uh, so it's about really combining all these things. So it's not only about IT solutions. Uh, so as one of the speakers said, it has to be smart, but more than that, it has to be intelligent. So that means using the technology in, the, in a good way. So, so we've explored all this with Mumbai, and now we feel that we are really uh, in a place where we have a, a kind of a good uh, understanding of what the European model looks like. Um, so we have worked also on uh, link to, uh, to urban development, so how do you really do planning? Uh, we've seen that for some of the Indian cities the population is going to double in a very short uh, period of time. So it's not only about retrofitting of old cities, it's also about uh, expanding these cities and making it into larger cities, so to build a, a more of a a matrix of cities uh, where cities used to be kind of a concentric thing with a center now it has to be kind of many different centers so that uh, you minimize transport and uh, it's attractive for people to be in all parts of the city so that's what we've been working on with Mumbai we're now expanding this also to other cities okay talking about Mumbai you said uh, people is what smart cities is made up of so yeah. how do you fit in the dichotomy wherein we have a Dharawi the biggest uh, slum of Asia yeah. How does that come into picture? I'm yeah, <laughs> it's, it's extremely important. I mean, we're going to work now specifically on, uh, on waste management to help, you know, planning uh, and solving the waste management challenge. Right. And of course, in that work, you have to take into consideration the population that is living in slums because it's an entirely different, uh, different concept. When you do the urban planning, you have to also, I mean, that is not the aspiration for the future, clearly, that this situation is sustained. So you have to make affordable housing, you have to, to ensure that, that there is a, a transition out of this situation. Uh, and, and again, that's, that's why the equilibrium of the whole smart cities uh, is very important. It should not be a, a kind of a gadget-centered uh, uh, development for only for a part of the population. It's very important that it is a, a socially inclusive development. Uh, I think that's also very much what has come out uh, in the Indian aspirations and the Prime Minister uh, says that very clearly when he speaks about it. So Absolutely. we're very much on that line as well. Okay. 
And uh, how do you think the smart cities concept would fit into India with regards to the 30 million stray animals we have? Because that would be a part of the smart city. What is your suggestion for India? How can we go, go ahead and uh, take care of this issue? Because we Indians are not uh, animal sensitive, unlike Europeans. So. Yeah, no, 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 that, that's correct. Uh, but again, coming from my own personal view, if people themselves have uh, a good livelihood, a good way of living, uh, there will be the surplus to also uh, be, be sensitive about other beings. But when you, when you suffer for your own life, that may not be the case. So I think that's part of the, the whole development uh, circle. Um, and Indian have, uh, Indians have a love of, uh, of animals, and uh, so, so I'm sure that, that that will be happening. Okay. If you could talk about future of uh, European Union and the Indian cities. Yes. So we, we will be deepening this cooperation that we have uh, as the European Union uh, delegation here. We will be deepening this cooperation that we have with Mumbai. So as I said, to work more with them on waste, on sewage, on some of these really you know, key issues that, that needs to be, uh, be taken care of. But we will also be expanding uh, the cooperation uh, through what we call the World Cities Program. It will be launched just next week in Mumbai. Uh, so that will be working with Mumbai, with Navi Mumbai, uh, and also with Surat and Chandigarh. Uh, and there will be a twinning with uh, four different European cities. Uh, so where we will try to bring together people and you know develop uh, collaboration, uh, share uh, experiences and business, and, and all of these kind of things. So, so that's one thing, but that's only what is being managed kind of from the, the top European level. Each of our member states, of course, have their own individual attempts to uh, to work with different cities. Uh, the, the French are working with uh, Pondicherry and others, and the same way uh, all the European member states. So what we would like to do would be to, to try to bring this together so that Europe as a whole brings something that is, uh, that is useful. Uh, so in comparison with uh, just ad hoc activities here and there, we would like to try to bring it together and really show what the European smart cities, European development model is. And that's what we had the workshop about and that was right. a good first, uh, <laughs> first step. Absolutely. That would be very good if we have uh, people cycling here in, in, in India. <laughs> yes, you have a lot of people cycling, but uh, yeah. <laughs> right. If you could uh, just tell us a little more about this uh, event you spoke about, would that be a smart city event, a solution finding event? Um, so in Mumbai, uh, the conference that we will have this Monday uh, would be a, a kind of a stock taking of uh, the cooperation that we've had since 2013. So we started in 2013 uh, with a very big conference where we had uh, 40 European cities and regions uh, coming here. So really to, to start to build this collaboration. And then based on the conference where we kind of really brainstormed about all the concepts of urbanization and, and what were you know the key issues we identified uh, three specific topics that we've had workshops on so there has been one more on environmental issues as i said uh, focusing on waste on uh, energy efficiency in buildings uh, so really these kind of environmental topics then we had one um, late last year that was focusing on urban transport that's a very big issue in mumbai uh, you have a lot of uh, congestion and you know smart solutions may not necessarily mean building new highways or uh, 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 roads uh, in the sea or whatever you know that's also part of the solution but there are also other ways looking at planning more you know how can you avoid that all the people have to move from one end of the city to the other end of the city uh, in the morning and then the other way uh, the day after it's very obvious in Mumbai because of the geography but uh, it's something that's applicable everywhere so we had a lot of very interesting discussions about that and then just uh, a couple of weeks ago we had another workshop which was really focused on on urban planning. So uh, the speaker that was also here, a very um, uh, renowned uh, Spanish uh, planning expert, showed exactly what I was just saying before, how you have to move away from this kind of concentric uh, cities to sort of a matrix city where, you know, so that's also where, you know, Mumbai and Navi Mumbai, it's a, uh, you know, it eventually it will develop into one big uh, mega city. So, you know, Navi Mumbai can do certain parts, uh, you don't have to do everything in Mumbai itself. Other parts that are being developed now, everything has to be seen 
in a context and it has to be developed uh, you know with proper transport between uh, these places you have to look at how the roads how the rail supports this as turning into one big mega city so that was uh, another thing logistics very much need to be in place uh, along with these uh, i mean infrastructure uh, waste, water, uh, I mean, all of this kind of needs to be taken care of. But also just, you know, connectivity, there has to be green areas, there have to be possibilities for the animals to uh, to move from one part of the city to the other. It doesn't work if you kind of uh, confine everything with concrete around it. Uh, so, so all of this has to kind of be thought into to the process. What we heard in the city, uh, in the session today, was that, I mean, you need very much to have a vision. You can't just let smart uh, happening like this, like this, uh, in small, uh, small parts of the of the. Um, what the speaker said today was actually very interesting. You need an acupuncture chart, so you need to know exactly which spots to hit with which kind of uh, needles. Otherwise, it shouldn't be like a mosquito uh, attack. So it shouldn't be kind of a random. It should be very well thought through, and that was, uh, I think, a nice picture of how. You need a vision, uh, you need a very strong uh, leadership, a governance structure to understand really how, how you can turn your city into to a smart city. Um, and then so we will consolidate all that in, uh, in Mumbai uh, next week. Just one extended question here. Um, the budget allocated is 6,000 crore by the government and yeah. um, the remaining funds would come from um, abroad and companies would be partnering yeah. to this project. Yes. So do you think all of this uh, is really possible or is it a far-fetched dream because Homes for All in India by 2022 and the kind of uh, high-rise buildings and structures we are talking about would not be uh, disaster resistant. So is it really feasible? Mm, yeah, I mean clearly the money that is allocated it's a very very good start and you need some money uh, to uh, some seed money to to make this happen but more than that uh, i think you need what you just uh, what you just said uh, what i just said to have a, a visionary leadership you need concepts that work and so on so so money is definitely a part of it and of course i mean building uh, sewerage and uh, infrastructure roads and all of that it will be very costly it has also been very costly in Europe. Uh, we have very much embarked on these uh, public-private partnerships uh, and I think that will also be happening here in India. You will have some money from the, from the public side, but, but you will also need private investors who are willing to, uh, you know, to go into this. And of course, that all comes back to, um, to how you, you need certain financial models. So you need to pay for water so that you have the money to uh, ultimately to provide clean drinking water and to treat it. You need to pay for waste services and so on. So, so again, it all goes hand in hand with the, with the development, uh, the social uh, issue, because until people have a proper livelihood, you cannot expect them to pay for these services. So that's why it needs to go hand in hand. It cannot just be a... Uh, you know, it's not happening overnight, but but the, I mean the the structure that we have seen is, um, I mean that has worked well for Europe and also for some of the countries that were not so economically developed. Uh, so initially, the foundation is in place. The foundation is in place, and and again, uh, you've started with a very strong vision uh, from the highest political level. That's very important, uh, and and we see now a lot of very positive developments uh, on that. So we're just very keen to be a part of that development. So.